But what is best in life? The open step. Three tours. Falcons at your wrist. And the wind in your hair. Wrong! Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. Hey folks, Mike for CMCC Build, back with a quick one, another five minute build where we make a character in... Less than five minutes. Today's build is incredibly straightforward, simple even. If you're a newer player or know of one, this is a great build for you. Even if you just like the aesthetics of the impossible to kill muscle bound warrior, this is a good one. No spells to worry about, no complex features or advanced decision trees. Whack stuff in the head, eat a bunch of damage, and look good while doing it. I make this look good. A quick housekeeping note, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, Patreon for perks, you know the drill. Simple, done, boom. People love Barbarians. All three campaigns of Critical Role featured one. The new movie has one. That 538 analysis of D&D Beyond character creations had Barbarian as the fourth most used class in the game. But here's the thing. For some of you, this is going to be hard to hear. Barbarians make a strong case as the worst class in the game. It's neck and neck with the Rogue, to be honest. Monk is probably a safe third, but like the Monk and Rogue, the Barbarian has a couple good subclasses that really boost the potential for any builds using them. One of those we'll take here. All right, all right. Let's get rocking! With the racial selection, there may be the urge to take one of the big brute races, but we need a feat and two bonuses. That means that we need to take Variant Human. Take the language that works for your campaign, party, and character background, bump strength and constitution with your racial ASI, with the free skill proficiency, take Intimidation. Your charisma sucks, so maybe a nice DM will allow you to use strength instead of charisma for this skill. You're a barbarian. You should be intimidating. Finally, with the level 1 feat, take Polar Master. Switching from the standard Maul or Greatsword to a Glaive or Halberd decreases damage from 2d6 to 1d10, but increases the number of attacks via bonus action 1d4 bludgeoning strike. It also effectively increases your melee range, since switching to a Polearm doubles the reach from the Maul Greatsword's 5 feet to the Glaive Halberd's 10 feet. This means that creatures trying to squirm past you have that much less space to do so, increasing the possibility of opportunity attacks. A consistent theme with this build is trying to maximize off-turn attacks to bring that total number of attacks from three to four in a round. Another way to do this is with the final clause of Polar Master. Creatures entering your reach, now 10 feet, also provoke an opportunity attack. So if they move out of your range, you get an off turn attack. If they move into your range, you get an off turn attack. And eventually if they attack anyone other than you, you'll get an off turn attack. That will make it extremely likely you'll procure that fourth attack. With your ability scores, take a 15 in strength, 14 in dexterity, 15 in constitution, 8 in intelligence, 10 wisdom, and 10 in charisma. That 10 in wisdom is there primarily to help your saving throws that can absolutely debilitate a barbarian. Although all the other great benefits of wisdom and wisdom based skills still apply. Take a custom background with two skill proficiencies, one tool proficiency, and one language. Stealth and insight are strong skill options. With a 14 dexterity and the stealth skill, the barbarian can certainly sneak up on enemies getting those powerful surprise rounds. Insight provides some decent out of combat utility with the tool and language, take whatever is needed in your party. Thieves tools often being the strongest pickup here. With your equipment, a glaive, some javelins, and eventually either a breastplate or half plate. The point in armor class is probably not worth a disadvantage on stealth, so unless your party just refuses to use sneak tactics, breastplate is the optimal pick. For your class, barbarian, with the two proficiencies, athletics and perception, at level one you get rage. Don't forget to use it. Also don't forget that it's limited. If you're doing any type of dungeon crawl, you better figure out some tactics to use when those rages inevitably run out. Unarmored defense is not good here. Don't use it. At level two, reckless attack allows you to gain resource free advantage, but it comes at a cost. People underestimate the drawback of giving enemies advantage to hit you on all their attacks. Use this cautiously, even though it synergizes so nicely with both delayed strength bumps and the power attacks we'll eventually get on this build. At three, we needed to select the Barbarian's primal path. But if you want to be a well-rounded Barbarian and not have a ton of dead levels from 6 to 19, Path of the Zealot is the choice. Take Radiant Damage with Divine Fury's 1d6 plus half your Barbarian levels in damage once per turn while raging. Radiant is a less resisted damage type than Necrotic, which means it's the better choice. Warrior of the Gods removes the need for costly components to revive you, so at level 5 when casters get access to Revivify, they can pop you up even when you're fully dead, without the need to consume expensive diamonds to do so. Finally at this level, Barbarians now get another skill through Primal Knowledge. Barbarian 
barbarians, postashes, kind of become skill monkeys in addition to tanks and damage dealers, it's a nice addition. Take survival here. At four with the ASI feat, grab great weapon master. This allows you to use a power attack, negative five to hit, plus 10 to damage on any of your attacks, including the 1d4 bonus action attack. And if you score a critical hit or kill a creature, you can make a melee attack as your bonus action. That bumps the bonus action attack from a d4 to a d10. At level five, extra attack. So two main action attacks, a third bonus action attack, that's either a d4 or a d10, and then a fourth attack as a reaction when someone enters or leaves your range. Fast movement at this level increases your speed by 10 feet, making it a bit easier for you to reach your enemies for you to bash them. Fanatical focus at six allows you to reroll a saving throw once per rage. At seven, instinctive pounce now allows you to move up to half your speed when you rage, again, making it easier to reach enemies. Barbarians also get advantage on initiative rolls through feral instinct. At eight, another ASI feat. We're not pumping strength just yet. Instead, Sentinel allows you to lock down enemies and ensures opportunity attacks even if the disengage action is taken. Adds a third way to use a reaction strike if an ally within five feet is attacked. Nine, brutal critical. <laughs> 10. Primal Knowledge. Take Animal Handling or a preferred skill of your choice. Zealous Presence allows you to buff allies with advantage on saving throws and attack rolls for a single round. Meh. Level 12 with the ASI, we start pumping strength now. Only do this if you don't have a means to get a strength boosting item. 13. Brutal Critical. <laughs> Fourteen, Rage Beyond Death. Yes, you can't die while raging, which combos nicely with level 15's Persistent Rage. Your rage doesn't end unless you fall unconscious. Sixteen, Max Strength. See the earlier caveat. Seventeen, Brutal Critical. Jesus Christ, man, come on. Eighteen, Indomitable Might. Strength checks are a twenty at the lowest. You don't fail strength checks anymore. 19 gives the final feat. I'm going with Lucky. You'll probably still fail most intelligence and Christmas saves and a lot of the wisdom saves, but this gives you three more chances. And finally, one of the most thematic and actually one of the stronger capstones in the game, Primal Champion. Plus four to strength and con. You're an absolute beast now. Go along in the wild and wreck it. You deserve it. Let's really...